Hallelujah. I don't know whether my voice can pitch it, but I will make an attempt. I'm sure sound of heaven will help me. Joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new, sing a new song to the Lord. Joy, of hey, Lord. joy overflows in my heart. Sing a, sing a new song. Sing a new song to the Lord. Hey, I will praise your name. I will praise your name. explain Paul and Silas they had just been beaten their hands were in stocks their feet were in stocks yet they prayed but they didn't only pray they sang praises to the Lord and God turned their night today somebody God is turning your night today in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to pray this one prayer and I want you to mean it with the whole of your heart you know you can come to church and all you had was just a brush. You didn't really have a true encounter. It was just a brush. The message blessed you. The people blessed you. You're on your way home. It was a good service. But when you have an encounter, it has a way of shifting your destiny instantly. You step into your week. You know exactly what to do, what buttons to press. You are trying to get away from the message and the experience. The message is not getting away from you. You go to sleep, that message is ringing till it brings you into realms of visions and dreams. I want you to cry to God today. There was someone who was like that in the Bible, Jacob. He said to that angel, I will never let you go unless you bless me. Today is my day for an encounter I will never forget. Can you say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, give me an encounter that will tear up my results, that will change my story. Raise your voice and pray that prayer. Give me an encounter with your word. An encounter in your presence. An encounter with a, a particular word in season. In your presence. An unforgettable encounter. Lord, this is my morning. This is my day. I would not live the same way I came. Send your word to me. Send your word to me. Send your word to me. Send your servants to me. Grant me an encounter that will mark a turning point in my life. Like Jacob, that will change my name, change my story, change the narrative of my life, shift my climate, or send me into a new season. Let every narrative of sorrow and pain be wiped away completely. Grant me an encounter with your word. And in your presence today thank you blessed God in Jesus mighty name we have prayed say better amen our father we bless your name we are grateful for this beautiful day it is the day that you have made we will rejoice and be glad in it we are grateful for planting us in such a church as this your word says you will bless us with pastors, shepherds after your heart that will teach knowledge and understanding. And that's exactly what you have done. For this, we celebrate you in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, Lord, this morning, may your word gain access into our hearts and indeed shift our climate in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask for a divine exchange 
that we will lay down our weaknesses and take on your strength. We will lay down sicknesses and take on healing and health. We will lay down confusion and take on clarity. In the name of Jesus Christ, today will be a day we will never forget in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Amen. Before you take your seats, please, can you help me celebrate God's servant, the shepherd over this house? Can you celebrate Pastor JT this morning? Is that how you celebrate your pastor? Is that how you celebrate? Amen. Do you want to celebrate FL? What are you waiting for? Can you please celebrate? The woman of God, we love you, man. Thank you. There's somebody near you. Can you turn to them and say, I celebrate you. Tell them you are royalty. Tell them you are royalty. Tell them you are a royal priesthood. But if you really knew me, you will buy me lunch today. Hallelujah. Can you take your seat in God's presence this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Don't lead me into temptation. No. I remember several years ago, a dear, can we celebrate sound of heavens, please? Ask. Several years ago, I don't know why I'm saying all this. This is not part of my message. Several years ago, <laughs> the relationship watchman wants me to say it. There was this dear brother back in the days in our church. You know, he's been in the church for a while, but this lady had not been so long she came into church. I think he was already in the workforce. The lady had not come into the workforce. So they were sitting together, no, no strings, nothing. They were just, it was just by happenstance and circumstance. The ushers just led them to sit together. There was no, I don't know, maybe it was an angel that was orchestrating things. So the pastor said, turn to your neighbor. Prior to then, he had not even turned to his neighbor. He had just been looking straight. You understand what I'm talking about? You don't want to be distracted. I'm in the house of God. As he turned to his neighbor, he just saw something else. And the butterfly, the sparks began to fly. You know what I'm talking about? You know, greeted the neighbor after service. The greeting went on. Amen. They exchanged numbers. They went. They, they, they followed up. Amen. Not so, so. Amen. They followed up. Today, as I speak, they are somewhere out of the country with two girls. They are happily married, doing very well. May your own day too come in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning is today, Abby. Today is your day. This morning, I have a lot in my spirit, but we'll just follow time. This morning, I, I'm just going to flow in the same spirit of what God has been doing in this great house. We've been learning on the acts of planet shakers, and we've already gone through two of those acts. The first act being um, the creation of the world, which was a, you know, the recreation actually. When God created the world, the devil seemed to cause, you know, some damage, so to speak, some breakage of the planet, which resulted in the darkness, the formlessness, and the void. And then God, in responding to that, caused a shaking. And after the shaking, there was light, there was form, and there was, you know, fullness. Second one being the fall of man, which was also another attempt of the devil to destroy the work of the Lord, the man that the Lord had put in the garden. And God also responded to that. And we got to learn a lot of things along those lines last week. Today, the next act of the planet shakers is the great flood. Amen. The great flood. Is somebody celebrating the Lord? The great flood. And let me tell you something about this great flood. It has a lot of significance. A lot of significance. For example, look at Genesis 6 from verse 5. Let's just read this and just set some, you know, background. And before I start, you know, exegeting. Genesis 6, 5. It says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his art was only evil continually. Next verse. We're reading to verse 8. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beasts and the creeping thing 
and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Following after that, if you go further down, God now engaged Noah, and God shared his vision with Noah in verse 13 on the fact that he wanted Noah to build an ark because of the violence, the wickedness, and how great, you know, mankind, the every imagination of his heart had become evil continually. And God shared his vision with Noah that he wanted him to build an ark of gopher wood and that he would take of every living thing, his, son, his, his sons and his, you know, sons, wives, his family, take them into the ark alongside all the animals. And you know, there was something very interesting about that. When God sends you an errand, when God sends you, sends you a work, everything you will need for that work, if you are following the Lord, they are supposed to follow you. Amen. Noah didn't need to go running after those animals to bring them in. It would have been a very difficult, if not impossible task. But as Noah was building the ark, there was a compelling force that compelled the animals he needed to come two by two and seven by seven and to come into the ark. And that's why I know that that thing that God has sent you to do, every human being, material resource, and everything you need, they will gravitate towards you in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, the antidote to lack is the Lord is my shepherd. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It means if I am lacking, it's either the Lord is not my shepherd or I'm not following the Lord. Because if I'm following the Lord, then God is sufficient to cater for all my needs. If he's truly my shepherd, the Amplified Version says, the Lord is my shepherd to feed, to shield, and to guide. Which means God caters for every aspect of your life as you follow him. But that's not where we want to, you know, emphasize today. You will also notice that when God shared that vision with Noah, Noah did something in Hebrews 11 verse 7. Noah did something in Hebrews 11 verse 7. The Bible says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Who condemned the world, God or Noah? Who condemned the world? Let me tell you something. See, God, whenever God is trying to carry out a project, because the earth he has given to the sons of men, he will start a search. He will start a search. There is a vision in his heart. There is a program in his mind. But because the earth has been given to the sons of men, he will begin a search. And, you know, a very good example was in Ezekiel 22 verse 30, where he says, I sought for a man who should stand in the gap and make the edge so that my wrath will not be poured on them. I sought for a man. He was on a search. He was on a search. And whenever he finds a man, he also says, I found someone. For example, he was searching for a king and he found David in, in uh, Psalm 89 verse 20. So this is a testimony of God searching and God finding. It's Psalm 89 verse 20 says, can we have Psalm 89 verse 20? I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. So God begins a search. God begins a search. These acts of planet shakers that we are learning about, you know, when God wants to carry out a shaking that will resolve whatever damage the enemy has done, God is on a search. Whenever God wants to visit a territory, he begins a search until he finds a man that can partner with him. It looks like because of the way he has bound himself to man in covenant, it looks like God is helpless. Not because he couldn't have done it himself, but he needs, so to speak, that partnership with mankind to be able to establish that intent in his heart on the earth. And that was what happened. Before I come back to this Noah story, in the case of, you know, in Samaria, when they were besieged by King Ben-Hadad in 2 Kings 6 verse 24, they were besieged. And as they were besieged, the Bible says the, 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 the issues in that in that city became so bad verse 25 please verse 25 there was a great famine in Samaria and behold they besieged it until an, a donkey's head was sold for 80 pieces of silver and fought part of a cab of dove's dung 
for five pieces of silver. This, this was a very terrible situation. A terrible situation. But you know, while they were in that inflation, while they were in that condition, while, amen, the full price was going up, you know what I'm talking about. While, you know, they were complaining, what kind of, uh, you know, regime is this or government is this? What are we going to do? You know, as they were doing all that, God was in a search. And God was able to locate his man with a word. And when he found his man, his man at that time was Elisha in 2 Kings 7 verse 1. Look at what the Bible does with his man. 2 Kings 7 verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. God found his man and what God had in mind, he put it in his man's mouth. His man declared it. And as soon as his man declared it, the next thing after God finds his man is, God wants to be sure there's no opposition. Are you there? He wants to be sure there's no what? No opposition. In this particular case, a man, sorry enough, he showed up as an opposition. He became an adversary to the program of God. May you not be God's adversary in the name of Jesus Christ. The man stood against God's program and said, even if God opens the windows of heaven, this thing cannot happen. God said, I will not even open the windows of heaven, but this thing will happen. Did you see any window open? No window opened. I wouldn't need to open the windows of heaven, but you will see this thing because now you are an adversary to my program. I will clear you out of the way so that my people can walk through open doors. There was an adversary. The adversary had to be taken out of the way. And you know, this, this repeats itself again and again. What about, you know, in the case of, in the story of, of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, God even came to visit Abraham when he found his man, Abraham. And he saw that Abraham was willing and was yielded. He began to share his vision with Abraham. And as he shared his vision with Abraham, you know, Abraham said, ah, God, you are a righteous judge. You, you will not destroy the righteous with the unrighteous. What if we find... You know, it started with 50. Are you going to, at least with the 50, we may be able to flip the game so that with this 50, a little leaven can leaven the whole lump and we can influence this territory and they can repent from wickedness, from immorality, and from this ungodliness. And God was listening to him. 50, 45, 40, 30, 20, 10. And Abraham stopped and God went away. God went away. And what happened after? It, it, God didn't even find five. God didn't find five. So it means everyone in that territory, they were not going to repent. And they had by so doing become an adversary to the Lord. An opposition. So what had to happen to them? They had to be cleared off. They had to be cleared off. And in this case, God had to bring out, you know, Lot and his family members to deliver them from that coming destruction. In the case of this flood, in the case of this flood, it was also a cleansing. God wanted to carry out a cleansing on the earth because all the imaginations of men were wicked continually. They were evil, violent. And God started looking for his man again. And what happened? Look at that verse 8 of Genesis 6. You will notice a word there. Genesis 6 verse 8. It says, And Noah did what? Found grace in the sight of the Lord. The, the person God was looking for also found God. Noah found grace. May God find you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Noah found grace. In the eyes of the Lord. And after I found grace, what was the next thing? The same process that God always takes. God started the campaign again. Who is on the Lord's side? And this time around, this, this ark was going to be built for a long time. At least over 70 years of building an ark. Yet the people insisted that they would not repent. They insisted that they would not change. Did you notice in the case of Nineveh? When Jonah became a partner with God and he cried against the city, what happened to them? From the oldest to the youngest, they repented one whole day of fasting. They cast themselves into dust and ashes and God, God changed his mind and God did not destroy the city. So it's not like God just wants to rain his wrath down on people. He gave them that opportunity. And they kept on listening to what Noah was saying, but they kept making mockery of him. They made mockery of him. They didn't follow what he was saying. Eventually, the day came, the D-Day, when Noah and his family were going to enter into the ark and every other person, they didn't come in. They kept making a mockery and eventually what happened? 
they all were perished in that flood. They all perished in that flood. It's important you note that I want you, you know, to just do this research yourself. This story of the flood was not just an abstract kind of thing. It was not just a symbolism. It really happened. As a matter of fact, there is a particular Christian professor, professor or Dr. Coleman, Dr. G. Coleman, Major G. Coleman, who came up with, you know, a lot of different things. It's like, you know, one of the apologetics to defend the fact that that flood really took place. Now, I want to show you something from the things he said. I'm going to read this out to you. He was able to build like a model kind of ark. He scaled it to look like the kind of ark of Noah so that he can use it as a basis in challenging science for science to believe that the Bible is true, that the word of God is true, that God is actually alive. And you know, he's been making a lot of success. Major G. Coleman, Look at some of the things that, you know, were postulated and some of the things that came out of his own finding. He said that that ark was about 550 feet long, 100 feet high, and 80 feet long. The flood lasted for over a year, and the entire world was covered with flood. Now, look at, listen to this. He said there was a subterranean water chamber 60 miles beneath the earth crust, like an ocean of water under the earth. You know that the earth is founded on water in Psalm 24 verse 2. The Bible says he had established it upon the seas. He had founded it upon the flood. So the, 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 the water that is underneath the earth crust, look at what happens. The water began to rise in tremendous pressure. That was what happened at the flood. There was a quickening of the flood, the water beneath the earth. It began to accelerate in tremendous pressure. Till it reached a thousand degrees. Listen to this. So much so that that earth crust cracked. And it burst out with the power of trillion billion atomic bombs. The burst that took place underneath the earth. Is the same with the power of trillion billion atomic bombs. That was, you know, the bursting that took place. You know, the Bible says, you know, in Genesis, I think it should be 11 verse 7. Genesis 11 verse 7. Let me just get that correctly. Genesis 11 verse 7. Genesis 11 verse 7. No, no, no. 7 11, please. 7 11. 7 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken open. That was what they were describing there. It broke open. So water came out from underneath the earth. And then the windows of heaven too were open. And so water came down from heaven as well. That was why there was no escaping. Water was coming out from underneath the earth. And water was raining down from heaven above. So much so that the pressure of water was so much till it completely buried not only every human being and every animal. It buried mountains. Buried mountains. Buried mountains. Of course, if you go on studying about what the man is saying, you will realize that when you check even very tall mountains, like Mount Everest, you will find sediments of like limestone and all those things showing that it was submerged underwater at some point in time. Submerged underwater at some point in time. But that's not my focus this morning. I want you to note something. Water came out from underneath the earth and water came down from heaven above. That is indicative of something. Water came out from underneath the earth. Massive rush of water. And water also came down from heaven above. From heaven above. Now, this, this points to something very, very important that I want you to see. This water coming out from underneath the earth is showing us something about the, 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 the way revivals should take place. Because what was happening, just like the other ones I shared, and I will share more, you know, is similar to God bringing a revival to a territory. If you look at the story of even Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 17, the Bible says Elijah just appeared. And then he said, you know, there shall be no rain except at my word for the next three and a half years. And as soon as he declared it, he went into hiding 
and God began to take care of him. And the words came to pass just like Elijah said it. He locked the heavens and put the key in his pocket. Locked the heavens for anything at all that wants to come down from heaven. And then he went into hiding. Please follow closely. When there was famine in Samaria, there were two sets of people that were not suffering. And you need to note this. You need to note this so that it can help our mindset even in this season of our nation, of our territory, of our community, of relating with God's word and expectation from what God has promised us. The two people that were not experiencing that famine were number one, the king. The king was not going through famine because the king was still able to move around, you know, instruct people, do things. Everybody submitted to the king. The king owned everybody, so the king was not suffering. The second person or set of people, if I can use that word, that were not suffering were also God's prophet. Because as soon as God's prophet declared it, which is also similar to his priest, God started sorting him out. He, God made a raven come and feed him. God made, you know, a, a widow feed him. God sorted his prophet or his priest out. And can I tell you something? The way God sorted his king, the king and the priest out, the Bible says you and I are kings and priests. So if we are kings and priests, it doesn't matter what is prevalent in the economy. There is a way God has carved out to sort you and I out. There is a place in God you can plug into and it will look like you are not feeling what everybody is feeling. Because you are both God's king and you are his priest. As his king, by wisdom you reign. As his priest, you enjoy divine favor. So even if your values are not providing resources, results, you know, means of feeding and excelling for you, the favor of God should be opening doors for you. Because there are various ways to bring in resources and help, even in a time of trouble. It's either you have value that is superior, that nobody can compete with, and your value stands out so much so that everyone demands your services. Or you have the favor of God that continues to make people like you and open doors for you. May the two of them follow you in the name of Jesus Christ. Kings and priests, we are a royal priesthood. So even in famine, even in inflation, even in the midst of all that, there is a mindset we must have from scriptures that should guide our choices, guide our decisions, guide our expectation. And even though there is flood, we should know that God has secured us. God has sorted us out. Can you say amen? amen. So we've seen that again from the story of Elijah. The story went on. Eventually, Elijah appeared again. And he said, he staged the contest. And the contest required that he will bring down, they will bring down fire from heaven. They will bring down fire from heaven. And, you know, everything went on. I don't want to dwell on that. Eventually, the prophets of Baal, who were the real reasons and the opposition, remember what I said, when God has found a man, there is sometimes, there is, I don't know why men are like that. There is a man that will stand and say, no, me, I will stand in the world. This thing is not going to happen here. There, there were the prophets of Baal, who were the people, who were the reasons why that famine came. Because they were the ones that led people astray in the way of Baal. They were the ones that polluted and contaminated the atmosphere. And so they had to be cleared out of the way before the rains would come. And after that contest, before the rains would come, even though Elijah had heard the sound of abundance of rain, he ensured that all the 450 prophets of Baal were what? Were cleared out of the way. May God take out of your way every adversary in the name of Jesus Christ. They don't have to die. I've shared this before. A certain young man, a Christian, well taught by his pastor, went for an interview. It was a juicy job. It was a dream job. It was a great job. He went for the interview. And while he was waiting in the waiting room, everybody, you know the way it is when you are waiting, everybody is asking themselves questions. Do you know what they will ask? Do you know? And everyone is trying to meet themselves in case they don't get the job. Maybe they can connect and all that. But he just kept connecting to the Lord. That's me, I don't have time for all this. It's only God that can show me what to do there. So he, be, he continues to pray. But news now came out from the panel that was interviewing them. The news was that the, the, the panel was a five-man panel. And there was a certain man there. After everybody has asked their question, even if you pass all the questions, when the man takes you up, he will continue asking questions till you. He brings the person down. 
and you know everybody marked the man he kept bringing everyone down i guess maybe he had an ulterior motive you understand what i'm talking about maybe he had a candidate so he was bringing everyone down and once he asked a lot of questions and you're not able to answer they just say sorry we can't give you the job and that's it but this child of god as he was praying and seeking god's face do you know what god did god didn't need to kill the enemy what happened was that as soon as he opened the door and it was his turn this man just had a st running stomach stomach upset and the man ran into the bathroom and he was there for a long while. He couldn't leave the place. They finished asking this guy questions. They were satisfied with him. As soon as they shook his hands and they said, congratulations, the man was running out of the toilet. They said, oh, we've already given him the job. That's how he got the job. May the Lord suspend whatever forces are standing on your way in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Elijah eventually brought rain down after the prophets of Baal were cleared out of the way. But there's something else I want you to see that I was trying to point your attention to about the waters of the deep being broken open and the windows of heaven being opened up. There's something very important about that. It was a cleansing. It was a taking out of maybe bad eggs, wickedness, violence, taking out of idolatry, taking out of all those things. But there was a strategy that God used. And this is where the message is. There's a strategy used. The strategy is this. In a true revival... See, it is a prayer meeting if I am seeking God and I'm even passionate, it is a prayer meeting. If God is visiting and is giving encounters, it is an encounter. But see, where it becomes a revival is that it looks like God wants to visit his people and his people want more of him at the same time. The way the waters of the deep broke open and the windows of heaven opened at the same time, it now becomes a revival when it is the two together. It is like a mother wanting to give birth and the child too wanting to come out. You know, there's a way it's only the mother that wants to give birth and the child doesn't want to come out. What do they do? They will induce the mother or they will do what? They will open the mother and bring the child out. If it's only the child that wants to come out and the mother is not ready, they will also find a way to stop it because maybe the child is not due to come out. You understand what I'm saying? But when the child wants to come out, and the mother too is tired of keeping the child inside. It is what we call revival. The meeting together of water from on high and water from the deep. Water from on high. God wants to visit his people and his people are hungry for more of him. They are not satisfied again with the kind of things they've been experiencing. They want more of God. They want more of God's visitation. They want more of God's touch. They want more of God's hand upon their lives. They want God to touch them and turn things around in their lives. And you will see something now, see. This strategy is the same strategy, you know, that happens every time there is an outburst of the move of God's spirit that results in the cleansing of a territory. God wants to visit his people and his people are tired of what is going on. Not just that God wants to visit his people and the people is still trying to get their attention. The two together. The water of the deep breaking open. But let me, let me tell you something. The water of the deep must be where the ignition comes from. Because it's the waters of the deep that first broke open before the windows of heaven were opened up. So it means we, we must start pressing into God and seeking God for something different from what we have experienced. We must start pressing into God. And can I tell you something? Not just the normal coming to church. There is an aggressiveness. Look at the way that water broke. The earth cross cracked. Cracked. And there was outburst of water. What is the significance of that water? That is the water, the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of water. Rivers of water. Those tongues that we are speaking, they are not just tongues of 10 minutes, 20 minutes. There is a way you press into God, not being satisfied with what is going on in your territory. Till you, you are able to, so to speak, catch God's attention. And the way you are pressing for God, God is also pressing for you. The waters of the deep broke open. Broke open. It broke open. And can I tell you something? The Bible says in Psalm 46... Psalm 46 verse 5. Psalm 46 verse 5. It says there is a river. Verse 4 please. Verse 4. Verse 4. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The end point. One of the dividends of revival is joy. 
joy. There is a river. The streams of that river. It will bring gladness to the city of God. Look at what happened to Philip. The Bible says, Philip went down to Samaria in Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Philip went down to Samaria. And the Bible says, he preached Christ unto them. Verse 6. Verse 6. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Verse 7. Verse 7. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Look at verse 8. And there was what? Great joy in that city. It was a revival that happened there. After that revival, look at the way people were hungry for God, including a magician. A magician attended the crusade and surrendered, even though it was fake initially. But it was, they were so hungry in that territory. God wanted to visit them. There was a pandemonium that made Philip run out of Jerusalem. And these people were also hungry. When Philip got there, there was a clash of the waters of the deep and the rain from heaven. And there was an outbreak of revival that eventually resulted in cleansing of that territory and joy came to the city. Joy is coming to your city in the name of Jesus. Cleansing of the city. Look at there being, you know, many revivals that, you know, one of the dividends of those revivals is joy, joy. The Bible says in Psalm 85, Psalm 85 verse 6, you will love this one, Psalm 85 verse 6. It says, will thou not revive us again? That thy people may what? Rejoice in thee. Which means when you revive us, what will be the result? There will be rejoicing in our territory. Do you know why? When there is that revival, it will affect, it will influence governance. It will influence banking. It will influence media. It will affect arts and entertainment. It will, it will affect every mountain of influence. And eventually, it will install a ruler that is righteous. And the Bible says when there, the people, when there is a ruler that is righteous, what happens to the people? The people rejoice. It will cleanse the territory. It will cleanse this, the entire territory. Look at the revival in the time of Charles G. Finney. He went to a certain town called Rochester Town in New York. Charles G. Finney with his friends. Abel Clary and Father Nash. They went to a, a town in New York called Rochester Town. By the time the revival was over, there was over 100,000 souls that were saved. These souls, they, they, they flooded all kinds of churches, not just one church. Many churches were experiencing a boom. Everybody wanted to seek the Lord. Not only that, it affected schools. Schools, sometimes during their break, they would be praying and seeking God and receiving the call of God. Guess what? Even prisons began to get emptied because criminality dropped. People didn't want to steal again. It felt like God was literally walking through the town and nobody wanted to touch sin. There was a cleansing that didn't cause death, but it caused a revival. And that revival affected the very air. The air was sanctified. You, you dare not steal because you will feel like maybe God is watching you. There was so much consciousness of God around. There was a cleansing of that territory by virtue of the revival that you know, Charles Diffini brought into the city. Guess what? Circus came to town. Circus. Only three people wanted to attend Circus. Circus had to pack up and leave because they would suffer loss. All the beer palace, the onky tongue joints, they shut them down. Nobody wanted to drink alcohol. Nobody wanted to drink alcohol. People, even people on the streets, where they were holding services, they will fall down on the knees on the street. Policemen will say, come and carry these people inside. They are crying outside. Instead of them to enter and come out, they will now pack people into, they will come to the altar and start confessing their sins, receiving Jesus Christ as well. May those times come again in the name of Jesus Christ. See, they, there will be need for this degree of visitation before the Lord returns. You know why it affects the return of the Lord? If you look at those acts of planet shakers, what is the last one? The last one is what? The return of the Lord. That's the last one, the twelfth one. And Jesus in his return said, The coming of the Son of Man shall be likened to the times of Noah and the great flood. Which means the same way the flood in the times of Noah had to do a cleansing. Before that visitation of God came to stay, there will have to be that kind of cleansing and revival before the Son of Man returns. May the Son of Man return and find you serving his purpose in the name of Jesus. Many times we get distracted. 
by what will we eat, what will we wear, where do we go, and all those things. And those things are very important. But as you are seeking all those things you desire, see, know fully well that God has a program. Let me tell you something. The lowest level of the kind of gift God can give you are things. Now, things cut across everything. Though. Give me an example of things, please. Private, God bless you. Cloth, a change of wardrobe, Abby. You enter your wardrobe, you're like, my goodness. Everything I used to use before, everything is completely changed. I have all the designers. Beautiful. What again? Power bike. Estate. Cars. Designers. Jewelries from head to toe. Tommy Hilfiger from head to toe. Gucci from head to socks. Eh? You understand what I'm saying? All the th they, are, they come under things. They are what? Things. But God wants to give us things. Oh. But see, there is a higher order of what God wants to give us. The second order is the loyalty of men. When you have the loyalty of men, things follow men. So those things will come to you. God wants to entrust you with men that will look up to you and believe in you. Because they've seen that you are a light and you are an illumination. You are an inspiration. I used to say when I was younger, I'm a positive influence. Somebody declared I'm a positive influence. Say it again, I'm a positive influence. Among friends, in my home, in my workplace, I'm a positive influence. Declare, say I'm the light of the world. God is looking for those kind of people. Look at what happened. Let me tell you, if we don't take action. You know, I asked a question earlier. We didn't answer that question. I said, who condemned the world, God or Noah? We didn't answer the question. It was actually Noah that condemned the world. God shared a vision with Noah. But Noah didn't waste time. He got up and he started taking action. Remember that Pastor Jesus spoke about taking action in the first meeting. It is when you take action that you have faith in what God has shared with you. If you don't take action, then where is your faith? You can't say, I believe what God said if you don't take action. Faith without works is what? dead. So as Noah took action, it became impossible for God to change his mind. Noah committed God that I have started building this ark. You cannot change your mind again. It was Noah that condemned the world. There is a way you can take a stand in a territory and it will become impossible for God not to visit that territory. Because if you, you have become this sold out and you are so yielded like this, so sacrificial in your devotion to God, then God will have no option than to visit that territory. God always looks for a man, just one man. Just one man. Look at the Charles Diffin I'm talking about, just one man. Look at all the generals, just one Daddy Gio. Just one, all the generals, apostles, teachers, prophets, all these revivalists, just one man. And you know what? It's not like God doesn't want many men. It will be better if this revival becomes hydra headed so that you, you rise up in ministry. You, you rise up in politics. You, you rise up in media. You, you rise up in family. You, you rise up. And every one of us, we are brightening our corner. So that everybody, we are pushing and advancing the course of the kingdom. And God has found in us that partner that, you know, we can, we can work with God to bring his purpose to pass on earth. I said the second level of the kind of things God can give you is the loyalty of men. The third level is his program. When God brings you into his program, when you know God's program and you start pursuing God's program, men will follow you. When men follow you, things will follow you. Do you get the order now? You can go around looking for things. Looking for car, looking for job, looking for spouse, looking for a new phone. A new phone just came out. This one is now old. I need that new phone. As good as those things are, there is a way you can, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God, the program of God. And all these things, the loyalty of men, the things that you desire, they, will, they have a way of following you. May they follow you from today in the name of Jesus. Let the amen be louder. Joy. 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 After that revival takes place of the flood. So I want you to see this flood from a different point of view. That flood that God sent that time, it is within you. You are the one that has the key to ignite it. Look at when, you know, the Bible says uh, um, that Jacob was on his way to Laban's house. And then he stopped at Bethel. The Bible says he was sleeping. And angels were doing what? Ascending and descending. Say ascending and descending. 
you know that that is deliberate. Because when Jesus was going to talk about it in John chapter 151, let's see John 151 and see what Jesus says. John 151. John 1 verse 51. Jesus said to Nathanael, Is it because I said to you that I saw you under the tree you believed? He now said to him, You shall yet see greater things. He said, You shall even look at what he says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see what? Heavens open. And the angels of God doing what? Ascending and what? Descending. Which means where, where does it start from? It starts from the earth. They will first take off from here, ascending before they start descending. The water of your deep will first break open before the open heavens will now happen. The child must say, I don't want to stay in this stomach again. And the mother too will say, okay, it's time. That means it's time for you to go out. There must be a push. A push. Look at Perez. His brother came out with his hand. He pulled his brother back and he shot up his head. He said, this bridge be upon you. They've already tied a scarlet thread on the, on the hand of his brother, Perez. But he, he, see, there was an aggression that he had. He came out. The bed canal. How big is the bed canal? Not so big. How did he push his brother back and push his head out? There was an aggression. He desired to see the kingdom of God come. He desired to see in his department that people will rise up and call upon the name of the Lord. He desired to see that I will not only be making money and getting blessed, but that I will live a light here. That everyone that comes here, they will want to live for Jesus because of my lifestyle. That by virtue of me coming to this place, I will bring that flood to the place myself. The flood that is within me, I will pour it out in this place. I will pour it out. That flood is within you. It says, out of your belly shall flow rivers. Rivers. Not river. Rivers. Do you know that there is what is called hydroelectric power? Which means there is a level of river that you will gush out that can generate high intensity power. Power that can turn things around. Do you understand what I'm talking about? There is a kind of generation that you will generate. Remember there was a time in Nigeria. Whenever it's dry season, what happens to light? There won't be sufficient power supply. They will say, Kainji Dam has done what? Has gone down. So there is not, not enough water to drive that hydroelectricity. But as rain starts falling and the water starts rising, it's now sufficient to drive and generate power. May your life not lack this power in the name of Jesus Christ. Power can either be leveraged or generated. Is it that somebody else is generating power for you and you are taking advantage of it or you are generating power yourself? You need power for your life. You need power. Power to excel. Power to establish the kingdom. The kingdom doesn't come in word only but in power. This flood must gush out of your system. Not only for your needs and things. As good as those things are. Press further to the point where you are touching lives. Where, you know, and there are low hanging fruits. Who knows what I'm talking about? Those security men in your office they look up to you for tips that's your opportunity to slide the gospel in those people that look up to you and they they believe oh that for this person to be doing well like this he must know the way to go and they are they, those are low-hanging fruits that you can quickly break in and establish them in the faith and bring joy to their lives true joy true joy to their lives my time is already fast spent but you see there are many other dividends many other let me just mention two more other dividends of this flood and of this revival. Many other dividends. I said one already in passing. That when that revival hits a territory, it will influence even the governance in that place. So that it will eventually establish the right kind of systems in that place. It will begin to influence all and sundry. And you know, it, it also brings peace. It brings peace. The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace within your walls. And what? prosperity within your palaces. He brings prosperity too. He brings prosperity. As you seek the, 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 the purpose of God. Look at Noah. After Noah came out of the ark, who do you think owned all those animals? Do you understand what I'm saying? After Noah came out, after the revival, he was in control of all the animals. He had been feeding them for the last one year. Who do you think they will be, they will be submitted to? Look at that boy with five loaves and two fish. After he laid it down for the purpose of the kingdom, they now said there were 12 baskets as they were going home. There is prosperity when you pursue God's purpose. 
when you allow this flood to flow, when you allow it flow, there is prosperity. There is increase. There is increase. I've shared this before, but let me share it again. It, you know, it's possible to come to the house of God like this. And like I said, you are seeking and trusting God for something. And that's very important. Because that is one of the ways you build your faith. As you release your faith and God begins to meet your need. Your faith is growing. And you are able to release your faith for even greater things. Beyond those things that you were receiving. So it's important you build your faith. Because faith is like muscles. The more you use your muscles, what happens? It begins to contract and expand. And it begins, some of us that have six packs. Do you, do you understand what I'm talking about? As you use it, it begins to, you know, contract. And then soon enough, you see that the clothes you were wearing before. You know, you know those are our brothers now. They will not even wear a cloth like this. You know what they wear now? They wear a tee. The one that is very light. That, that, that their six packs can almost tear that cloth. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to see what sacrifice I went through. Because I want to show you what I got. Amen. You know, so... It's, 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 it's very important that we know that as we are pressing into God, there is something happening. Our faith is being built. However, beyond those things we are asking for, we must also come to the place where we find out God's program. God's program. Look at these acts of planet shakers now. It begins with, you know, Genesis 1, but it now culminates in the coming of the Lord. What do you think, you know, pastor is trying to get, get us to see? He's trying to show you that, see, Anytime the devil does a thing, God already has the answer. But God is looking for a man that can partner with him. So that, you know, that man, through that man, you know, that glory can be revealed in the cosmos. And the name of the Lord can be glorified. But that man will never be the same. Because the man will also enjoy blessings. Enjoy promotion. Enjoy increase. Enjoy expansion. Can somebody say amen? I'm closing now. As I was praying and waiting on the Lord... And seeking God concerning this message, this great flood. You know, as I pressed into God, asking him, I don't just want to talk about a great flood that is not applicable to our lives. The great flood happened how many years ago? What is the application to our lives now? And you know, as the Lord was showing me these things, he showed me that there was a person here who your life looked like a basket. He showed me a basket. You know what, something that is about a basket, there are leakages. That as things come into your life, those things begin to leak out. And the Lord says he's mending that basket today. Say it better, amen. amen. Every hole in that basket, the ones you know and the ones you don't know, the places where the things are leaking out, graces are leaking out, conviction is leaking out, spiritual passion is leaking out, even your resources are leaking out. There is waste all around. Everything comes in, but it doesn't stay. The Lord is mending it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will go into this week and there will be a new day in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 That basket is being mended. It's 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 being mended. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's also someone here that the Lord also, you know, told me. He gave me the word rich. That the person had been trying to reach into a particular face. There is a desire, a panting in the person to reach. But it's, it's been difficult for you to lay hold. You've been reaching, but you can't lay hold. You can't lay hold. It feels like whatever all the things you are reaching for are far from you. The Lord is bringing them to you in the name of Jesus Christ. That father said to his son, how is it that you found it so quickly? He said, the Lord your God brought it my way. And the father did not argue. Because the father knew the attributes of the covenant. That that's one of the characteristics of the covenant. The covenant sees to it that when you are in God's program, the things you need that you will have been pursuing, they will come to you. Everything you have been pursuing here so far, the Lord is challenging them to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody, I want you to rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet this morning. Rise to your feet this morning. I want you to call upon the Lord. Let this service mark a change of story for me. Raise your voice and pray. Let this service mark a change of story for me. Let this service mark a change of story. A change of story. I've heard your word on the great flood. On the revival you are bringing to the earth. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to be left out. Let this service mark a change of story a change of story let it be my alignment service that I will align 
with what you are pouring down, I will not waste your resources. I will be positioned for the windows of heaven as the deep are broken open. Somebody is praying. Enlist me, O oh God. Enlist me in your program. Enlist me in your plan. Enlist me for your mission. Enlist me for a new season. Enlist me, Lord. Enlist me, Lord. Enlist me, Lord. Enlist me, Lord. Enlist me. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Say that amen. amen. Two more things that the Lord laid on my heart. Two more things the Lord laid on my heart. The Lord spoke about giving someone visibility. You know, the Bible says on the tenth month, in the tenth month, the top of the mountains began to be revealed. That's in the flood, though. It was in the tenth month. The flood started in the second month. And then it was raining and bursting forth for 40 days and 40 nights. And then for 150 days, like five months, the water was upon the face of the earth. In the tenth month, the top of the mountains began to be revealed. That is visibility. Those your products that have been suppressed. Those your services that nobody has been subscribing to. Your giftings that look locked down. The Lord is giving them visibility in the name of Jesus. A lady, a lady, that there has been a veil covering your face. People will look at you and they will not even be able to see that this is the goodness of God that they can take home to their family. May the Lord tear off every veil in the name of Jesus. May you become visible in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody, everything you set your hands to do, it feels like they are not doing well. They are not prospering. It feels like you are laboring under an open heavens. Today, today, your heavens are opening in the name of Jesus Christ. Visibility. 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 Do you know that many of the jobs they turned you down on is because you didn't have visibility? Many of the things that belong to you that was given to someone else, they will say, ah, you came late. For us believers, bad doors should shut before we get in. Did you hear what I said? When you're about to enter a bad door, like a bad business, like a bad investment, like a bad relationship that will wreck your emotions, that the person will make a mess of your life, the door should shut before you enter. When it's a good door, they will wait for you to enter before the door closes in the name of Jesus. Somebody, I want you to see. I want you to release a violence. There's someone here, see. I heard this very clearly. You, you've been, you've been, you are not so confident that you will live to fulfill God's purpose. Death has been trailing you and trolling you. Can we pray? Can you say in the name of Jesus Christ? We speak life. We cast the spirit of death. Raise your voice and pray that prayer. There's some, a number of people here struggling with that spirit of death walking around, wanting to kill their lives, their homes, their marriage, their health, their, their business, their womb. We cast the spirit of death. We cast the spirit of death. We speak life. You will live and not die. You will live and fulfill purpose. You will not die in the prime of your years. You will fulfill purpose with long life. The Lord satisfies us 
He shows us his salvation. You will live and not die. Ante kete bakata barata. Skebe le katabala me kote pravada. Ata kete boko simple katabala. Arelondi. Skobo kote prekeskita. Abakata barabala. Skabare kote prekita bayada. institution the man attended a meeting like a crusade of, of some sort at the time he was struggling to pay his two bedroom rent it was a serious struggle so when he went to the meeting of course that's what is on his heart and then when the word of knowledge came the word of knowledge said there is someone here you are struggling to pay your rent he was happy but the word now said the word didn't say you will get the money the word said God is saying you will build estates he said oh estate. I beg, I won't rent. You say estate. You know, that's the way we are sometimes. What we, what we are pressing for is the uppermost thing on our hearts. Even these things I'm saying, you're like, if this pastor knows what I'm going through, he will not tell me about revival now. I tell you, this revival, this revival, it is the heartbeat of God. As you pursue God and His righteousness, all these things, they will be added. This man, he reluctantly received that word. Reluctantly. By the time I met him, by the time I met him, he had already been involved in building four estates. From rent for two bedroom flat. Four estates. Some of them partnering with people. Some of them building for people. Some of them, you know, just joint, you know, this joint stuff. The fourth one that he was on at the moment that they were still working on. They found precious stones on the land. So they had to cordon a place off and they started bringing in people from South Africa so that they can come and use their expertise. They were building only on one side. God can settle you. God can settle you. Pastor will come up and talk about acts of planet shakers. It doesn't even sound appealing. Which one is acts of planet shakers? Talk about my needs being met. Talk about me being healed. But see, as you plug into the program of God and you are involved in what pertains to God, those things that pertain to you, you will see wisdom, you will see favor, you will see doors opening for those things to be done. Not like you should totally abandon them, but God has you in mind. He has you in mind. He was on his fourth estate. Fourth. Fourth estate. Somebody, I want you to just talk to God in one moment. Like I said, it's not like God doesn't want to bless you with things but he wants the perspective to be correct yes. he doesn't want you to exalt things above him above his program abo above his kingdom he wants you to put things in their place so that when he places a demand on those things you can easily let them go you will not say no 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 
you can easily let them go because you know he gave you in the first place and if he's asking for them you know what someone said someone said when when i shovel to god god shovels back to me and his shovel is bigger than my own his shovel is bigger than your own when you shovel to god that god this is your own by the time god will shovel it back to you it will overwhelm you it's not a fair deal it's not a fair deal it's to your advantage it's to your advantage it's to your advantage in one moment i want you to cry to the lord that the lord will enlist you as a planet shaker he will enlist you in this is program somebody talk to the lord enlist me in your program your program in this church your program on the earth your program in my office enlist me in your program in my school in my family in my business enlist me lord enlist me in your program enlist me in your program and list me in your program. And list me in your program. Are you praying? Are you praying this morning? Your grace, my life has changed.